Hi everybody, Dan here uh, from Math for Love with the third in the Making and Breaking Conjectures series. Today, dot multiplication. And to start, I want to start with something really, really simple um, as a kind of motivating examples. So, addition. We understand it. 4 plus 2. If we want to do that, we all know it's 6. But we know something more, which is we can draw a picture of it. We can have 4 dots plus 2 more dots. We can count them all up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's our answer. So we have a picture that goes with that equation. And that's nice to have. And if we wanted to, we could create a whole addition table and write the answers to any of those two numbers added together for as far as we wanted to go. In the same way, we understand multiplication. If we have 4 times 2, we can draw a picture for that also, which in this case would be a 4 by 2 array. Count all those dots. There's 8 of them. That's our answer. And we can use that picture of multiplication, the array, to calculate any two numbers multiplied to together. We could make a multiplication table and extend that out as far as we wanted to go. So here is something new. I'm going to call it dot multiplication. Here's how it works. If I want to do 4 dot multiplied times 2, I'm going to take the first number, the 4, and I'm going to make 4 dots on the top of my picture. I'm going to take the second number, the 2, make 2 dots on the bottom of my picture. I'm going to connect up all of the top dots to the bottom dots with straight line segments, like so. And then I'm going to look at all of the points where those line segments intersect, and I'm going to count the intersections. So if I count those intersections, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the answer is 6. And that's how dot multiplication is going to be defined. So I'm going to do another example in a minute. Right away, you might be like, oh, maybe you can just do, f maybe 4 dot multiplied times 2 is just 4 plus 2, because 4 plus 2 is 6 also. That might be my first conjecture. Right away, though, I want to start playing with other examples and see what happens. So here's another example, 3 dot multiplied times 3. So I'm going to have 3 dots on the top, 3 dots on the bottom. I'm going to draw all of the straight line segments between them, and then I'm going to count up all of the places where they intersect. It looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So my answer is 9. And that's weird, too, because that's, before it looked like it was the same as addition, now it looks like it's the same as multiplication. Maybe it's the same as addition in some cases and the same in multiplication in other cases. Maybe it has something to do with even and odd numbers, or just 2 and 3. I'm not sure. Um, but if you understand how to draw that picture, draw dots on the top, dots on the bottom, connect them, and count the intersection points, you can figure out how to dot multiply any of these two numbers together. Well, sort of. And in fact, that's the challenge that I have for you right now, which is, can you figure out how to use dot multiplication to actually calculate what any two numbers dot multiplied together are? For example, what's 10 dot multiplied times 13? Now, one thing to not do here is actually try to draw the 10 dots on the top and the 13 dots on the bottom and draw the connections, because it's just going to be too complicated a picture. Um, so some tips, start small and work your way up. See if you can find patterns. Some other tips as you're trying to really figure out how this works, uh, draw precisely. Use a ruler or a computer program like GeoGebra. And secondly, make sure you draw, make sure you count all the dots you get. It's very easy to accidentally miss them. Um, it should be, if you have a bunch of lines all crossing in the same place, you want to avoid that. You want to have each dot just come from one pair of crossing lines instead of a, a whole bunch. Um, another tip is you can actually, just like we had addition tables and multiplication tables, we can make a dot multiplication table and look for patterns in that. And one of the best things you can do here is start with the ones row and see how many of those you can fill out, and then the twos row and see how many of those you can fill out, and then the threes row. As you figure out each one, you might start to notice patterns and how they work, and that'll really help to figure out what's actually going on here. All right, that's it. Good luck on the challenge.